While this video really doesn't have anything to do with the Dodge Clock, as you see it here, it has to do with what's next to it. And we're going to get to that in a second. In the original video, and I'm just going to flash a quick uh, snippet of that on screen here, you can see that there is a wood grain TV that used to be on this dresser. And that TV was an RCA Color Track 2000, I believe, and I gave that to Lexmark's 567. Um, I had kind of grown tired of it. He has a video of that. There's going to be a link in the prescription. And I had kind of grown tired of it because it had some interesting issues that it was causing, and he will demonstrate some of those in that video. So in exchange for that TV, I wanted, of course, another TV up here. And I could go to Walmart and I could buy any sort of, you know, flat screen, piece of crap, Vizio, or any other brand, made up brand they have today. But instead, I decided to put something back in service that I purchased back in, oh, probably very, very, very early 2002 when the Whiff and I got our first apartment. Uh, I had purchased a Panasonic 27-inch CRT TV. This is the Panasonic CT-27D11E 27-inch CRT television. This was pretty much one of the good sets you could buy that were out there. I wanted a Panasonic, I knew that much, and it was 27 inch, and it wasn't the absolute top end set, but it was a good middle of the road set. It has all of the common features of the time, such as stereo sound, you can see the two speakers at the bottom there, front panel input jacks, uh, it had an excellent picture, and uh, a whole bunch of inputs and crap like that on the back. Uh, here is the label that was on the back of the set, and you can see it was purchased, I'm sorry, it was manufactured in December 2001. So here it is now. This TV was the TV we had in our basement apartment when we started out, and I had bought this brand new from The Wiz where I was working at the time, so yes, I did get an employee discount on it. Don't remember or have a clue what I paid for it. Not a clue in the world what it was. But it's here. And this TV, I took, and I don't know how I did it, but we had just gotten the apartment. And the whiff wasn't there, but I had a key to the place. And we had a TV stand, but no TV. And somehow, now bear in mind, 2002 at the time of recording, that was 20 years ago. So I was 23 years old, and I was absolutely invincible, young, dumb, and full of cum, as the saying goes. I carried this TV by myself then, because my back wasn't fucked up, and I carried it down the steps and set it up, and man, what a beautiful picture. Uh, we watched it, and it's been a great set all around. Um over the years. Never had a stitch of trouble with it whatsoever. When we bought the house in 2006, it moved here and it served as our living room TV for about four years until I got the big plasma Panasonic TV that's there now. Uh, so anyhow, um, long and short of the story is it's your plain Jane run-of-the-mill 27-inch CRT TV. It never had a lot of hours on it, so it's still a very, very low hour set. We didn't watch that much TV. We watched it a lot more back in the apartment and some here, but nowadays, not so much. And this TV was decommissioned back in 2010 because I got the big screen TV for the uh, living room. And this went down to the basement and just sat there for 12 years. So Lexmark's 567 was over for the 4th of Juslime, and we loaded up the RCA TV on a hand truck and somehow got it down from here and took it downstairs and loaded it in his car. 
And then we went down to the basement and put this guy on the hand truck. Almost lost it going up the steps, but we got it. Uh, got a little scuffed up here and there on it, but that's all right. It's otherwise just fine and, of course, survived all of the moves. So here it is. But before we get into that, I want to show you the back of the TV because it has a plethora of inputs that you might not expect. Uh, like I said, it did have standard features for the time. So it has the stereo speakers, front panel input jack. It has a 125-channel cable-ready tuner, which, of course, is useless these days with uh, NTSC being gone. Um, it had auto clock set where I think it would uh, use the signal from the local PBS station, if I'm not incorrect on that. And it would somehow gather the time and, and date from that and would automatically set it. That's all gone also. Can't do that anymore because, again, that's all done. But in the standard NTSC mode, you do have a couple of options for sound as well, such as SAP for second audio program or supplementary audio program or whatever they want to call it these days. Uh, of course, stereo and mono as well. But this TV has on the front, as you can see, RCA jacks. There also is a headphone jack to the left of that. That's why the opening for the um, RCA jacks is a little bit wider than the jacks themselves. So it has uh, a headphone jack on the front which is an interesting touch, something you wouldn't really expect much out of a 27-inch TV being so big. So on the back, of course, you're going to have a couple of other inputs. It's got its regular 75-ohm coax and uh, two other RCA inputs, but it also has a couple of other connections. So I'm going to grab the phone and record with that. It's just easier to get back there so I can show you. So here's all the connections on the back. So trying to remember what everything is, and I'll try to get the camera in here a little more. There's kind of a knackered looking coax wire. It's just one I had that I grabbed. And yes, I do have coax running into it um, because channel three and the cable box still has that. The white and red, as you see here, is audio out. And then you will see an S-Video connection, which you might expect. Then you're going to see uh, a red and white, and you'll also see a blue and a green and a white in the distance. That's correct. This TV also had a component input back in 2001 for component hookup, and that uses five wires as you can see right over here in this converter box red blue green white red as you see from right to left there there's some dust on it this here is the easy cell hdmi to component converter why you would ever ever want such a device i don't know but china makes it and it doesn't have a green clean light. It has a dead red light. I, I don't know. It takes a 5-volt input HDMI. Yes, it's upside down. And there is a button there that uh, you can press to allow it to synchronize to the various modes within. And what is here that is hooked up HDMI? Well, if we come over this way, here's the rest of the HDMI cable, the battery for the Dodge Clock. And below that is one of these Android TV boxes. And if I come around here, the flash is kind of washing it out, but I don't have any other light here. You can see that it has a little clock on the display there. And I can watch YouTube and a whole bunch of other stuff through this box hooked up via HDMI to component into the TV. I still have, of course, the original remote control for it, which is right here. Uh, they were doing this funky whitish colored buttons. I don't know if they were supposed to glow in the dark back in the day. I've never seen it glow in the dark. Although it does have a button in the upper right that says light. And it lights up in a color you wouldn't expect. In red. That's weird. You'd think maybe green or blue. Well, blue wasn't that prevalent at 
2001, 2002, and it only lights up for just a brief second there. And, you know, you have that. It was supposed to control your TV, VCR, uh, cable, and DVD player, as you see there. Your mute, channel guide, when that was a thing still uh, that you could get. I guess. I, I don't remember the function of that. I, I have to download the manual for this because I have no idea where that went. TV video button to select the input. Of course, your channel buttons. The Panasonic R-Tune button, which will go to the previous channel and then recall. I forget the difference. And then some VCR controls there. So I think it's finally high time that we go ahead and turn the TV on. Well, it's not a widescreen TV, but it's sort of giving the appearance as such. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> so anyway, it has an awesome picture on it. Let's go to... I need the other remote for the cable box. I haven't programmed it in this thing because, like I said, I don't have the manual yet. Uh, the local news, which sucks now that I don't watch, but we'll put it on. And of course, they're showing nothing in particular. Three hundred five million in cash. The jackpot grand prize. Blah 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 blah. You know, channel two is a definite HD channel. There's commercials, of course. The banding, as you know, CRTs and cameras they don't get along so there you are with that it has closed captioning and yes I am using the closed captioning on the TV because it has it oh another thing I raised and lowered the volume you see the on-screen volume control and you think well all TVs have that you know what this is the first ever bedroom TV bedroom TV that I have had in my 43 years on this planet that has an on-screen volume display. I shit you not. That's the kind of old sets I've been running. I have a set in the basement, which eventually I'll make a video on. I, I don't even remember the brand offhand. And that does have on-screen display, but does not have an on-screen display for the volume. It'll show you the channel. It'll say mute, I think, if it's muted and a couple of other things like an on-screen menu in that, but it does not show the volume, which is quite interesting with it. Anyway, like I said, this is an extraordinarily low-hour set, so the picture is absolutely gorgeous on it. I'm sorry about the reflection in the window over there, but everything is still good. I don't know what the green fringing on her hair is, but this is, however, on the coax input. So we're going to go ahead and change that. Now, the cable box, I could have hooked up HDMI and put that into the converter box, but instead I chose to put the Android TV box in there uh, because I tend to watch that a lot more than regular TV. So what we're seeing here is just plain old uh, Channel 3 uh, NTSC, and that actually before we go and change that, I'm going to go into the menu. Here's the on-screen menu. Yeah, picture, audio, timer, channels, lock, and setup. We'll go through everything quick. Picture, you have your color tint, brightness. Picture, sharpness, normal would make it go back to uh, the default settings. And I've changed that. You have your color temperature, which you can change. Warm, normal, or cool. It's sort of a busy picture, but you could see in that one. You can see right there how it changes. So normal is fine. And then we'll go to audio. And here is your stereo, SAP, or mono. Your bass treble, balance. Uh, normal, of course, would set it back to that. AI sound it has, which is a feature that will lower the volume of commercials. Somehow it knew how to do that back in the day. Yet it only works over the coax input and not through any of the other inputs on it. It has a fake surround sound mode, which is on now. Makes it sound a lot better. Um, uh, 
Turn the volume up. During high impact activities for total body and total comfort. Motion is motion. So get yourself some A-Lines. Right? A little hard to tell, but it certainly makes a difference. So we'll turn that back down. And uh, what else is in? Oh, speakers on, off and variable, variable audio out. Off and fixed Before audio out. Off our regular price. Plus you'll get our and you're hearing it says off, but you're hearing fixed audio point. out. There's a reason for that. We'll get to in a little bit. And um, that's good right there. Uh, timer, clock set. I had to set it manually, of course. Uh, sleep timer, 30, 60, or 90 minutes. Timer. You have two timers you can set to turn on and off at a particular time and particular channel, a particular day. So that's kind of nifty. Uh, channels. Channel scan, enter channel, and then you have caption, manual caption, and you could enter in different channels. Like I actually programmed this back when we had NTSC cable back in the day, actually in the apartment. WCBS was channel 2, NBC channel 4, NYW channel 5, HBO was channel 6, WABC for 7, uh, blah, 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 and it just goes on and on from there. And there's only a certain number that it allows you to program in. And one of the other channels that we had, 67, was Game Show Network, and I put that in. So that, and then, uh, how do you get to, there? Input label, you can set names for the input label. Yes, back in 2001. And you see I've labeled them. Android for video one, which is the component input. Two is S video. I could have called it cable because that's how I have that hooked up. And video three is front because it's, well, it's the front. So we'll go back, lock, and then you can set. There's all, I don't even want to get into this. This is all described in the book, but it's like parental controls and shit like that. And set up, you have your idioma, does English, Espanol, with the smaller N, with the Enye, and Francais. Program channel, you have TV, TV or cable. Closed caption, and you have your options for all of that. And auto power on, I think means when it's plugged in, it'll automatically power on. And channel banner obviously displays the channel banner there. And that's good. So that is that. And now we can go to the video 2 input, which is S-Video, and see if the green fringing... Let's see if we can get... Yeah. Uh, this button... It's definitely less, and the picture indeed is sharper over S video as you might expect. So back to that and S video. So standard S video. So that's all there. And then video three is the front input, as you see there. The rating, I forget what that was up there. And input, it says comp, period. Before, without the label, it would say component, but it said Android. i got to run through them one more time to get back there. I went right past it. Comp Android, the rating again, I don't know what that does. And that is the Android TV box, which I can wake up. And these are some of my recent videos. Let's see if there's any new... No, I knew about all these and that. So that is that. And we're going to get into one of my videos in just a moment after I change the battery on the camera. Now, some of you may be saying, well, why did you go and hook up the Android TV box via HDMI? The cable box should be hooked up HDMI and... Well, as you saw with that converter, there's only that one input on it. 
And then, of course, there's going to be some smart asses out there that are going to say, well, you can get an HDMI switch box. You're absolutely right. As a matter of fact, I have two of them, and they're in place in other locations within the house. So I don't have a third one, and while I could get one for this to hook up the cable box that I rarely watch, it's also going to add another fucking remote, and it's already enough with shuffling, you know, three, four remotes that that's bullshit. So, I, you know, like I said, I don't watch it that much to warrant it, and this video is just fine. Fortunately, I had S-Video and the component cables, as you saw before. I actually have a nice set of those, but I think they're on the big screen in the living room um, because uh, that's where, you know, the best stuff is. Uh, these I happen to find in my stash. I didn't even know I had these cables that were blue, white, and green, uh, blue, red, and green, or whatever freaking colors they are. I can't even remember anymore. Yeah, blue, blue, red, and green, YPBPR, one of those type sort of kind of things. On the old RCA TV that was here, uh, it definitely worked. And pretty much, as you see, you can read the text on the screen. Even the small text. Um, with the RCA TV, it didn't have any such input besides composite and as such the best I could hook up this box with was composite and in fact it offers a composite output I'm gonna try right now to get a composite cable and jack that in the front and see if I can make it work I can't promise it but I'll give it a shot so I was able to get it hooked up here is the component input And here's the composite. Take a look at the difference. Look at the text. Even the big text is squishing into itself. Nowhere near as good. It's still a lot more readable on this set than it was on uh, the old uh, RCA TV. And another interesting thing I want to point out that is something I've seen before and I don't know why uh, is if I turn here and zoom in you see that little cutout with a couple pixels in there and it's on the other side as well it's just something it has and I like I said I've seen that before and I don't know exactly why or, or how or what any of that is, why it does that, anything. Um, so anyway, let's go back to the component input, which is here. And we'll watch the BNT security lockbox mounting. Let's see, there's, a, there's an ad. Maybe I'll turn the volume up a bit. Introducing the door stud. Another ad. It's just something you got to deal with, you know. All the wildlife, ladies and gentlemen. The wildlife. Look at that. A frontal. And we'll skip into the garage here. So there's still a way in. But if I leave through the garage... That is absolutely door, awesome picture quality. And if I switch to the composite... I don't have the sound hooked up. It's there, but it's nowhere near as good. The color looks a bit more vibrant, oddly enough, on the composite. And that's the component. But it's still excellent and much, much sharper. I'll gladly give up a little bit lower color for uh, you know much, a much clearer picture than that. So that's all fine and good. And there's one more thing that happened. Let me uh, turn the volume up for a second. Take a listen. Well, actually, wait. <laughs> Hang on a second. Little lever there. And now we're going to set this to one, two, three, four, like that. Move the little lever back. 
So that's the sound out of it. And that is one thing that I'm telling you sucks about this TV compared to the RCA. Now, it's got stereo speakers. No problem. That's just the composite I jacked in the front. I didn't bother with the audio because whatever. Uh, anyways, it sounds, this TV sounds so flat. So flat, which is odd because it's not a flat screen TV. A flat screen TV, you're going to get flat sound out of. I mean, they flatten the whole thing. <laughs> My dad bought a 27-inch Sony Trinitron back in, I'm going to say, 1995. Uh, that had speakers on the sides. I actually still have them. And they sound like a decent enough set of like computer speakers. Uh, they were really good. The sound was really good out of that. But on this, with just the speakers that are there, it sounds flat. The RCA had speakers on the sides, and they were big. And I never made a video of that TV, and I'm going to tell you why. The reason why is because of Susan. I used to have a DVD player up here with a CD... I guess, that had a whole bunch of MP3s on it. You know, like actual real music. And I was going to do some samples because back before Susan, we could have 30 seconds of audio. So I'd give you maybe, oh, I don't know, four or five songs so you could hear how good that RCA set actually sounded. Except Susan came in and seven seconds ain't gonna really cut it other than, look, the sound works. It's copyright free music, and yeah, I'm gonna give you a sample of that in a minute. But the sound on this thing irked me so bad that I had to do something. I don't think the camera's really focusing on that too well at all. But on top, as you see, there is a sound bar. In fact, this is the Jacraya sound bar. Both this and that Easy Cell HDMI to component converter, the videos never have debuted as of the recording of this video just yet. Uh, this TV has audio out. So I said, yeah, why not? Now, of course, that's got a 3.5 millimeter plug. And yes, the TV does have a headphone jack in the front. When you plug that in, it disables the onboard speakers. And I want to use the audio out, so I had to use a converter and blah, 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 plug it all in. And here it is up here. This has a little blue light. I don't know if it can even be made out on camera right up there. You don't even notice it. This one is a lot more in the way. Uh, that's powered via USB. Well, isn't that just fucking handy that the cable box below it... In fact, it's even got another USB port right there. It's got one on the back, so I just robbed power from the cable box to run the sound bar. So now, if I play the video, let me reconfigure the camera. There it is. Scramble it by two. Won't open and back to one, two, three, four, and it opens. So good. So I was gonna take this and I was gonna mount it up on the wall, kind of where the, the light switch is by the garage door. So now it sounds a lot better. Now the sound bar that's on top of this thing is meant for a computer, uh, obviously, and not for a TV. That's not to say it can't be used for one, because I did it. Uh, in fact, I have a nice sound bar, really nice one, and then another one which I don't remember if that video has been released just yet as of the recording of this video. By the time this is out, that, of course, will have seen the light of day. So I have two sound bars. There's actually supposed to be a third on the way from China, but the deal fell through the first time, and uh, I keep emailing them, where is it, where is it, what's going on? Okay, we're so sorry, we send out another that hasn't shown either, and they don't have tracking information, so I have a feeling 
that that one isn't going to show. So I have this one, but in the future that may change. And of course, that's kind of a pain in the ass because this is a CRT and that's the only place I had for a soundbar. And yeah, so it just makes it fun like that. Uh, I'm going to go and uh, call up another video here. Yes, I use that very old term, call up. Another video here that is really just for the audio, just to give you a sample, because now with the sound bar, you have sound on top of the TV and below the TV where the actual speakers are. So it sounds a hell of a lot better now. Uh, it's by no means anything even good, and it still doesn't scratch the surface of how good that RCA set sounded, but it's a lot better, and for the bedroom, it's more than perfectly fine. I'm just absolutely fucking jazzed to have this TV up here, because I remember how good the picture quality of it was, and how many low, you know, how low hour it really is. It's actually, this is the most used TV in the house, this bedroom TV, believe it or not. Uh, so that RCA had countless hours on it. Uh, this one uh, is going to start getting up there in hours, but hey, I paid a few hundred dollars for this, definitely brand new. So without a question, I want to get my money's worth, and I'm really happy that it still works after all this time, just perfectly. So let's get that video so you can hear the sound quality. All right, here we go. This doesn't have the greatest bass, this song, but... You know, as such, it does sound kind of tinny and that, but that's kind of more this song. Let me see if I can find something else. So here's another crappy royalty-free song you may have heard before. I haven't found anything that's real bass-heavy. Maybe the bass will get pumping in a minute in the song. I don't know. Not much, but... It's definitely pleasant. Let me go shut the sound bar while it's playing. Not so good, Al. <laughs> adds to it without a question. So that is pretty much the deal on this Panasonic 27 inch TV. It was a great um, it was a great TV back in the day and it's still a great TV today. The brightness of everything, the clarity of the color, the whiteness of the white, the greenness of the green, the color rendering in general, it has never been duplicated by any sort of flat screen that I've ever seen since. So I still get that great CRT picture. Yeah, it's got scan lines. Yeah, it's not high res. Yeah, it's not high def. Who needs that shit? I have good color and a decent picture. And in fact, a much better picture now than I used to. And I'm still thoroughly, thoroughly pleased with my purchase of this TV. So all around, it's been excellent, and I hope that it continues running for many, many years to come. Thank you very much for watching. I really appreciate it. Make sure you click like, make sure you click subscribe, and take care. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Oh, and in case anybody wants to see what it looks like when the TV turns off, I guess there's TV twerps out there. 
That's what it does. I'll turn it back on and back off. Oh, and by the way, if you complained about the whine of the TV, when you get to be my age, actually when you get to be well before my age, you can't hear it anymore. So if you got a problem with it, you're too sensitive. Just wait till you fucking get old. Watch the video again. You won't hear it.